Hey guys, my name is Kaylin, and I work for the Papio Missouri River NRD. Today, we are going on a scaled tails journey, exploring some of the cool critters that call Nebraska home. We are going to focus our attention on snakes and lizards. Snakes and lizards are part of the same order, called squamata, within the class of reptiles. Squamates are the most diverse group of reptiles, making up roughly 7,400 species around the globe. First, let's take a step back and discuss characteristics of reptiles. Do you know what makes a reptile a reptile? Reptiles are vertebrates, meaning they have a spine. They are also ectothermic. Ectotherms are animals whose body temperature changes based on the temperature of the environment. To warm up or cool down, they must find a sunny spot to bask or shady areas to rest. Reptiles are covered in scales. Scales are small hard plates that are made from the same material as our fingernails, keratin. They give reptiles protection and allow them to prevent water loss through their skin. Lastly, with the exception of a few, reptiles lay eggs. Some reptile species can lay upwards of 50 eggs in a clutch. Snakes and lizards, being squaw mates, share two additional characteristics. First, they shed their skin. While snakes shed their skin all at one time, lizards shed their skin in patches. The second shared characteristic is their flexible jaw, allowing more mobility and strength, giving them a strong bite grip and the ability to eat large prey. Did you know Nebraska is home to 29 native snake species? We are fortunate to be smack dab in the middle of the United States. Many territories cross into our state, giving us a healthy diversity of species. Thankfully, only four of our 29 snakes are venomous. Shall we meet our first two snake educators? This is Bert and Ernie. In Nebraska, we have three species of garter snakes. They include the common garter snake, the plains garter snake, and the western terrestrial garter snake. The common and plains garter snakes can be found throughout the state. The western terrestrial is only found in the northwest region of Nebraska. Garter snakes are often mistakenly referred to as garden or gardener snakes. Snakes don't garden, they're carnivores. Although you can find them in your garden, they are well suited for a variety of habitats, both urban and rural. While it may be surprising to find one in your yard or garden, these slender, relatively small snakes are beneficial in keeping unwanted pests at bay. Garter snakes are known to eat insects, slugs, small mammals, fish, and amphibians. Bert and Ernie here prefer small mice. What do you think snakes do when winter rolls around? Bert and Ernie don't have stylish winter jackets to wear. Instead, snakes and other ectotherms must brumate. Brumation is similar to hibernation for mammals. However, for mammals, Hibernation is a period in which the animal relies on fat storage for surviving the winter. Brumation is different in that the animal may be active for a few days depending on temperature and does not usually remain dormant the entire winter. Garter snakes have been found brumating together in large numbers, some sites numbering in the thousands. Our next snake is much larger. In fact, He's one of the longest snakes found in Nebraska, reaching lengths up to 8 feet. Meet Ratatouille, our black rat snake. Ratatouille is about 7 years old, and as black rat snakes age, their scales tend to get darker, eventually becoming completely black. The underside, or belly, of this species eventually turns white. One of their most interesting adaptations is their ability to climb trees. Without the luxury of arms and legs to assist in climbing, tree snakes 
like ratatouille, use their outward angled belly scales to dig into the rough bark, giving them the grip they need to climb. Would you like to see ratatouille climb? If you've ever climbed a tree, you know you have to be careful. Same goes for snakes. To avoid injury and to keep them safe and out of reach of ground predators, rat snakes always have a backup plan. If they slip or lose grip, they will often anchor the end of their body to bark or to a tree branch so they can lift themselves back up. Talk about an impressive pull-up! They also switch how they move. Instead of slithering like snakes on the ground, they use what's called concertina movement, so they can cross thin branches or smooth bark. They anchor the lower half of their body to a branch or crevice, pushing their upper half in the direction they want to go. Check it out! If black rat snakes climb trees, where do you think you could expect to find them? That's right, they prefer forest habitat. They can be found in the more forested areas of eastern Nebraska. With their keen ability to climb, this species can be difficult to spot, as they will spend a portion of their time in the tree canopies, in search of food and avoiding potential predators. What types of animals might ratatouille find in a tree? You got it! This species is known to snatch up unsuspecting birds landing on a branch. Or, if fortunate enough to come across a nest, they might steal an easy meal of eggs. They are also known to eat a variety of mice, rats, voles, or even amphibians. Like a majority of snakes, they use constriction to dispense of their prey. Have you ever seen a snake eat? Without limbs, silverware is rendered useless. Snakes eat their prey whole. Snakes have a unique jaw, allowing them to open their mouths wide. Check out this irresistible nose. Meet Harley, our western hognose snake. This stout-bodied species is native to central and western Nebraska, preferring dry, short, or mixed prairie habitat. Sandy soil and a nearby water source make an excellent spot for these snakes to call home. Snakes, lacking strong vision and hearing capabilities, rely heavily on the tongue as their primary sense. They use their tongue to taste or smell as a way to interpret the environment around them, sensing potential prey or predators. The fork shape of a snake's tongue gives them directional sensing ability. Pretty cool, huh? Speaking of senses, let's brush up on snakes' vision and hearing. Snakes' vision may not be as strong as other animals due to the spectacle or eye cap covering their eyes. This eye cap, like the rest of their scales, is also shed. Do you notice Harley has no ear holes? Snakes do not have any external ear openings. While this doesn't mean that they can't hear, it is believed that snakes are not able to hear sounds nearly as well as other animals. Harley is a mildly venomous snake, allowing him to bite his prey with his rear fangs and inject a toxin harmful to their favorite prey. Don't worry, his venom or toxin is so mild that it has no effect on humans. In fact, they rarely bite in defense, and even if they do, their tiny fangs located in the back of their mouth wouldn't be able to reach. The venom rarely kills his actual prey, just slows the prey down, giving him an opportunity to catch and eat his meal. Western hognose snakes have a preference for amphibians, mostly toads and frogs. Based on availability, this species will also eat lizards, small mammals like rodents, and bird's eggs. Check out Harley's coloration. His scales have a similar pattern to that of a prairie rattlesnake. This similarity may confuse some predators, making this species less enticing as a potential meal. Hognose snakes' defense mechanisms are not just physical, but behavioral too. In order to ward off predators, these snakes will flatten their neck and hiss, 
earning them the nickname Prairie Cobra. Take a look at this eastern hognose snake, which is also found in parts of Nebraska. This hognose species puts on a more dramatic show compared to its western cousin. While defending itself, you'll notice this one inflating its body and widening its neck. They raise their heads and hiss while shaking their tails. They might look tough, but rarely do they bite, preferring to strike with a closed mouth. One of their most intriguing defenses is their ability to play dead. If the hissing and flattened neck are not doing the trick, these snakes will put on a dramatic act of death. Imagine this, a hognose snake rolling on its back, sticking out its tongue, and in some instances, regurgitating its last meal, not only looking dead, but smelling like it too. This is Pete. Pete's a northern prairie skink. This elusive skink is found in central and eastern Nebraska, preferring habitat near water, like a stream or a lake. They are great burrowers and will use their cute little legs to tunnel into soft ground to avoid predators and in the winter, dig deep enough to avoid freezing. Like most lizards, skinks are carnivores, meaning they eat other animals. Their diet consists of small invertebrates like insects, spiders, and sometimes known to even eat other prairie skinks. Don't worry, Pete's friends are safe. His favorite snack are crickets. Prairie skinks are a small lizard with a total length between five to eight inches. They have a brownish coloration with multiple stripes that run all the way from their head to their tail. In the spring, males sport a bright orange chin to attract a girlfriend. Like other lizards, skinks have a cool adaptation that allows them to drop or detach their tail in order to free themselves of a predator's grasp. This next lizard looks and even behaves a lot like a snake. Meet Vlad, our glass lizard. One of the most distinguishable lizards in Nebraska is the slender glass lizard. Vlad is actually a European species of legless lizards, but has similar characteristics to that of a slender glass. You might be wondering, what's the difference between a legless lizard and a snake? Though similar upon first glance, Legless lizards have eyelids and external ear openings. As we learned earlier, snakes have neither of those physical traits. Looking at their scales, you'll notice a lateral skin fold that runs from the neck to the base of the tail. Another fairly noticeable difference is their tail size. Legless lizards' tails are well over half the length of their body, giving their body a stiffer feel. Speaking of tails, this species' defense mechanism is to drop its tail when threatened. After the tail drops, the tail spasms and wiggles for up to an hour. The hope is to distract the predator with the tail as the lizard gets away. The tail is made up of loose connections. After a portion of the tail is gone, it will heal but not regenerate. The loss of a tail is advantageous in a life or death event. However, there are certainly disadvantages as well. Tails tend to store fat reserves and help them slither. Nebraska is home to the unique slender glass lizard found in the south central portion of the state. These legless lizards are very rare in Nebraska and rarely reported. Researchers attribute this to the loss of preferred habitat and being historically located on the edge of their range. The slender glass lizard lives in tall grass prairies and dry rocky hillsides. This species will occupy burrows of other animals, spending a fair amount of time underground. Vlad's diet and the diet of a wild slender glass lizard includes small invertebrates such as beetles, crickets, spiders, along with larger prey items such as small rodents, snakes, and eggs. Thanks for joining us and our education critters today. We hope you enjoyed learning about a few of Nebraska's unique squaw mates. For more information about the Papio Missouri River NRD, you can find us on all the social media platforms or by checking out our website at www.papionrd.org.